Konshian for having me today. So basically, um, I will talk about uh, what I. Oh, Rian, you just have to reactivate the subtitles. Probably oh. need to activate it. Sorry to interrupt. Is it okay now? Yeah, looks good now. All right. So I will talk about uh, my my actually it's 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 my my PhD thesis like four years ago. Like I I graduated four years ago in 2017 at the University of the UQ. It's about the mesophotic coral ecosystem. Actually, in the past uh, three to four years, I always talk about this because I'm quite proud of what I've done with with also support with 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 my my supervisor and also my college in 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 at the university and i'm really hope that i can do like i can replicate this uh, uh study in my country indonesia so um um i will talk uh about the mesopotic coral ecosystem and actually uh more deep about the question about uh, the the potential role of the uh, mesopotic coral ecosystem in the shallow reef recovery. Um, first, maybe I would like to introduce you a bit, but yeah, just briefly because uh, Marika already introduced me in the beginning. So uh, I was uh, uh, I was doing PhD and master actually from 2017 uh, 2012 to 2017 for five years in the University of Derikus in Japan. And also I did postdoc in New Caledonia and last, last institution is in NUS Singapore. And uh, I published, uh, well, uh, just several paper, like some papers related to the uh, coral reef ecology, mesophotic coral reef, and also the rep coral reproduction, sex, uh, po sex allocation, population dynamics, and uh, related to coral physiology. So you can contact me if you have any question at the repraska at gmail.com. And now I live in Bekasi, Indonesia, city close to Jakarta. So uh, before I forget, uh, I would like first to acknowledge, uh, well, because this is not only my work, because of the many support from people, from uh, institution, especially for uh, my uh, previous PhD uh, supervisor, Dr. Shaki Hari, and also my uh, research mentor, Dr. Frederick Sinegar. Actually, he's in here <laughs> from the uh, University of Derikus, Japan. And also from the staff, postdoc, and student at the Sesoko Marine Station in Okinawa. And also at the, well, uh, the Japanese government, and MEX, uh, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sport, Science, and Technology. And also from the uh, research grant from the Sasakawa. So um, I don't want to make it long. Uh, so this is the offer, uh, the, the the outline of my talk. The, I would I would I would start I would start uh, with the, the overview of mesophotic coral ecosystem, and then I will just jump in to uh, the case study, like the the, the study about my uh, my uh, master and PhD thesis in, uh, in 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 Okinawa Jawa in Okinawa Japan related to the genetic diversity and also the uh, coral reproduction and larval biology and also uh, talk about the mesophotic coral survival and acclimation at shallow reefs all of those are related to the uh, question that the mesophotic coral ecosystem have the potential role to for the shallow reef recovery and then i will talk a bit about the future perspective and um uh we know that the pressure of the uh, coral reef ecosystem is getting intensive both um, globally and locally and in which at some places the healthy reef are often become the degraded reefs. however um not all of the uh, coral reef ecosystems have the same pressure. There are some potential refuge areas of coral reef, including the uh, upwelling areas and the turbid areas in which most of the organism there, they can escape from the high UV light and ocean warming. Also, uh, the offshore bank, that the pressure from the local structure can be minimized to, to its distance. And also at the deeper reef, uh, that the organisms can escape from 
both high UV light ocean warming and also local stressor because uh, uh, they are quite far from uh, uh, local local stressor due to its depth. But I will I will I will uh, uh, in this talk I will focus uh, more on the deeper. Reef. So deeper reef uh, I will start here uh, uh, use the term as the Mesopotic coral ecosystem. Actually, this term is just actually uh, uh, just came out recently, like like well uh, a decades ago, like in 2009, 2010, something like that. Uh, the term meso means like uh, meso means middle and photic means light. Light it means like middle light, and uh, the characteristic of this ecosystem is well the depth from 30 to 150 meter, and they have uh, low light intensity, but there's still uh, organism that uh, depend on light. So, um, so, um, so the the, the keyword of this ecosystem is the low light ecosystem, but also, but, but there is still, uh, there are still uh, organisms that depend on the uh, light. So uh, I put this here, uh, this is the, the number of publication per year, because we know that the Mesopotic coral ecosystem is still under uh, underexplored. So I think I need to mention this, that the, uh, the how, how the, what do you call it? Uh, the Mesopotic coral studies worldwide so far until 2019. I read the paper from Pyle and Copus in 2019. So you can see here the, the graph showing that the, the uh, bar graph that showing the number of publication per year related to the Mesopotic coral ecosystem. And also uh, the line graph showing the cumulative publication until uh, 2007, 2017. So you can see here that the um, the first uh, what do you call uh, first publication related to Mesopotic coral ecosystem is appeared in around 1960 until 1970s because the invention of the scuba diving and the use of submersible uh, in uh, research and also the the invention of the, using a uh, rebreather they are still but still. Uh, low number of publications, but until 2000, maybe 2010, it increased significantly because of the uh, invention of the high technologies such as the uh, ROV and AUV, and also maybe because of the importance of the Mesopotamian coral ecosystem itself, such as the question about the the, the potential role of the Mesopotamic corals for shallow reef uh, recovery called the deep reef refugia hypothesis. I will I will I will uh, uh, talk about this uh, a bit later, related to the uh, my study. And um, so I will just jump in uh, the the study uh, about uh, what I did in, uh, in in Okinawa and also my colleagues there. Uh, so if you know already about Okinawa, so Okinawa is kind of a uh, southernmost part of uh, Japan, and the the climate is still I mean it's it's still in subtropical, so we can find we, we can still find a good coverage of coral with a good uh, diversity of corals. Not only in the shallow, but also in the in the uh, mesophotic depth. So actually. Uh, uh, I, uh, there is a one publication just recently published, uh, like a few weeks ago in Galaxy Journal of Coral Reef Studies about the overview of the Mesopotamic coral ecosystem around, uh, around uh, Sesako Island in Okinawa. So we, we use, the study used the uh, photo quadrat, we use uh, like this, like I show you, the uh, photo quadrat system. And we 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 collect the data by using scuba diving and also until until, until 40 meter, but uh, the depth that not that that are not accessible to scuba diving, we use the rope assisted from the boat. And this is the a, a little bit result like uh, how the coral reef of the of the Mesopotamic coral reef in Okinawa. So you can see here in the picture the corals uh, from like uh, Acroprotenella. Uh, it's uh, I think it's uh, Pachyceris, 
the genus is Pachyceres, and this is the uh, Ceratophora. And this is kind of a community of the Colari, a kind of a non, non, non uh, I forgot, <laughs> Coralimore variants, actually. Yeah. So the, the, the coverage in Okinawa from 30 to 50, 50 to 70 meter, and 70 to 100 is varied uh, among, among location. This one is the location and also among depth. So, so from kind of uh, less than 10%, but also up to uh, more than 40%. So the red one is the coverage of the Scratinian corals. So quite, quite, uh, quite, quite good uh, coverage. And I just want to show you here how uh, the environmental condition looks like at the mesophotic depth. So I, I, I put, I, during my study, from 2015 to 2017, I put uh, loggers, uh, including the light loggers here, and also the, the temperature loggers. I will show you in the next slide. So in here, you can see the, the, the light condition, light penetration from depth of three meter, five, 10, 20, and 40 meter. So from June 2015 to March 2017. So you can see the fluctuation of the from uh, what do you call uh, summertime in June, July, and then going to uh, uh, winter time in December, January, and then going to summer again. So what I want to show you here that the um, the the light at the mesopotic depth is quite low. You can see here the blue one is the the light penetration at the 40 meter depth. So if, uh, if we calculate the, the different magnitude of the light from three to five compared to 10, 20, and 40 meter, so the light at 20 meter is two to three times at 20 meter, and then six to seven, six point seven times at 10 meter, and then almost uh, 15 times at three to five meter. So it's quite uh, quite different from from 40 to three to five meter. And for the uh, for the temperature at the same period, I just want to show you like uh, in the summer. Well, it's uh, already known that the, uh, the the temperature difference during the summer is quite different than uh, the temperature during the winter month. So you can so you can see it here that the fluctuation in the shallow depths it's. Uh, uh, larger than the uh, uh, the one that in the mesopotic at 40 meter, but I want just want to show you here that the um, in for example in in summer 2016. Well, actually I was I was so lucky to see the the, the temperature anomaly at that time during my study because I found coral bleaching there. So at the depth of uh, 40 meter, the, the the temperature at the summer 2016 is around 27 to 29. But if we go shallower depths, the, 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 the temperature is quite higher, like 1.3, 1.4, and 1.8, higher than the depth at the 40 meter. And then I can see uh, coral, bleach, uh, coral bleaching there. For example, here in the, in the 7 meter, and then 10 meter, and then 20, 10, 20 meter, I can still see the kind of patchy of bleaching, while at the 40 meter, is still largely intact. So you can see here uh, kind of one evident. I was very lucky to see this, to see that the uh, 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 the the refugia, the, the 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 how the mesopotic coral is kind of protect protected in in this site from the uh, coral bleaching phenomena. So as uh, from this, uh, I just jumped that the uh, the term like the the term the deep reef refugia hypothesis actually this 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 uh, hypothesis first postulated by uh, peter green 1996 there is one paper one synthesis paper talk, talking about that the deeper reef are less affected by the coral bleaching and also in many paper that deeper reef as one potential refuge areas that i already mentioned in the first in the in the early slides and also in uh, uh, the, the term point in 2010 that the, the deep reef refugia hypothesis 
actually uh, there is two terms here that the mesophytic organism are less affected by thermal stress, actually related to the corals. And also because of they are really uh, less affected, they have a, a kind of have potential to, to, to receive, shall we, as a, as a source of uh, larvae in, in, uh, to the shallow way. So in this case, uh, I was so lucky also to, 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 to do this uh, kind of, uh, try to, to, to answer this question through my PhD study. The question was, can the mesopotic corals be a source of larvae for shallow reef recovery? So I used the corals or corals, hard coral, the streptinian coral as the mod model species, including the Acropora tenella and the Ceratopora hystrix. So there are three approaches that I use at the time. Uh, first is uh, the genetic diversity, how the corals from shallow to the mesopotic corals are uh, potentially connected, like using the, uh, the method of the genetic diversity. I mean, uh, we sample coral from the shallow and also the mesopotic one and to see the, the what do you call, the genetic diversity, including also the, the, uh, the symbion algae inside of the corals. The second one, I, I, I did also the coral reproduction study and also the larval biology to see whether they are really uh, reproduced because if if you want to see the mesopotic corals can potentially recede or can a source of larvae to shallow, they need to, we need to know if they are uh, uh, capable to reproduce. And also the larval biology also show kind of their potential to disperse to the, to the shallow way. And the third one, I want to, uh, 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 I had uh, uh, an experiment to see like the survival and also the acclimation of the mesopotic corals at the shallow reef. So after the larvae settle, they become kind of young corals, or we call juvenile. So after that, I try to transplant them in the shallow reef. So I want to see how they, uh, their survival and how do they acclimatize in the in the shallow reef. And also, uh, I, I I did also with the with the adult corals. And uh, the first one for the coral and uh, algal symbion or the, from the family of Symbiodinia CA, you see the genetic diversity over that. So the, the research question, like I mentioned before, that the Ardemiosopotic and shallow corals uh, is isolated population that's quite different from shallow to mesopotic, or they are quite similar uh, genetically. So we collected sample not only from the, uh, actually it's from Okinawa prefecture, but in scattered place. And, um, and for the host coral, uh, for, the, for the coral itself, like we, 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 we did the, the uh, what do you call, study by, uh, what do you call, uh, genetic diversity for using the nuclear, nuclear gene and also the, from the mitochondrial gene. So in the nuclear gene of ITS2 showing that there are, there are four cluster, one, two, three, and four. And then from those cluster, we found that there is no significant difference of uh, what do you call differences or partitioning. They are kind of mixing. We can find from like shallow at one to nine, intermediate 10 to 29, and deep 30 to 73 meters. So all of in in each cluster, cluster most of them uh, occurred in 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 each cluster. And also for the mitochondrial gene, we show that they are also present in 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 the in the cluster. This is also the same that for the symbiotic algae from uh, family Symbiodinaceae. So we found that there are, there there are two uh, what do you call uh, Symbiodinum clade, the C1 related and C59 related, and all of them uh, occurred in the in the in each uh, uh, depth uh, uh, groups, one to nine, ten to twenty nine, and until thirty to forty seven. So from this, I can uh, the first study uh, I found that uh, we found that the both cluster and haplotype in the uh, host coral and both subclade of the algae. All of them are present in all different. So uh, from here we can uh, take the conclusion that, that there is no genetic structure among them. 
the potential for the genetic connectivity. Uh, so if you want to read more, you can you can you can uh, read uh, this paper. So lead by Frederick Sinigan. And uh, for the uh, second one is the study about the coral reproduction and larval biology. So the research question was uh, want to see if uh, also the mesophotic coral all sexually reproduce because at the time, because when I start, I think less than ten species studied. So yeah. I, I study this uh, uh, cor uh, coral species, Acroprotinella and Stratopora hystrix, and also want to see if the larvae can disperse and settle to shallow, to, to shallow reef to see the, 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 the larval uh, biology through uh, settlement experiments. So uh, the, the result shows that the, yes, the, the corals, the mesophotic corals are, can reproduce. So they reproduce quite similar timing for the stratopora hystrix, quite similar timing with the one in the shallow reef. Although we uh, we found that it's a kind of shorter period than the shallow one. So they 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 release larvae. So you can see here the the graph with the black bar showing the coral colonies contain larvae. So from mar from uh, May to August in three different years, 2013, 2014, and 15. So, the, but the question is, yes, they reproduce, they can reproduce sexually, but uh, with uh, with a shorter period. So you can read uh, the paper here. And also for the second one, second species, the Acroprotenella. So they, yes, they also, they can reproduce, but uh, I found this for the Acroprotenella that the, 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 this is the, 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 the female colony, uh, no, I mean, the, 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 the colonies that contain uh, uh, female, uh, contain all sites or eggs. The black bar showing the, the one that the, the colonies that already mature. So yes, they, 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 they can reproduce, but kind of uh, a little bit later than the, the, the acroporids in the, in the, in the, in the shallow reef. So yeah, you can read in the paper here that I show you. And also, I uh, did also observation for these species in the in the tank. I tried to kind of um, uh, what do you call uh, put the environmental condition as close as possible, like the light and also the temperature, but not for the pressure. But uh, we found that. Finally, after, well, I think after the first year was failed, and I think this is second year. I think second year, we finally found that the, well, actually 20% uh, of my sample, they release uh, eggs. And, I, and we found that the eggs are positively buoyant. It's quite surprising actually, but because we know that they, are, they come from 40 meter depth and then, well, yeah, the eggs are positively buoyant. So we know, we can see that, well, they're going to the uh, surface, and but, but, but still we don't know how they fertilize, how the, for example, the, 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 the sperm also, also going also, how they, is it uh, diluted when they're going uh, to the surface or not? But yeah, we found that the eggs are positive buoyant. And this is the, related to the second one, to see like, um, the, the study about the larval biology, uh, but the species is the Ceratopora histic because they, they are a, a, a brooder because they release, really, they release already the, the larvae. The question was to see if there is any uh, light effect on mesophotic larval settlement and survival. So you can see here the four graphs showing the, the larval settlement and survival. So you can see here the black box showing the how the larvae settled in the, the x-axis is in hours, zero to 96 hours or four days. And the y-axis is showing the percentage of the larval behavior. So you just see the one that settled. So the, the more quick the, the larvae settled in, 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 uh, in substrate means that they like, they like the, the, the place, they like the condition. So you can see here, this is the one 
at 40 meter at the the, the corners come from and at 20 meter 10 meter and then 5 meter so you can see here that the 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 settlement delayed for the 10 and 5 meters significantly compared to the one at the 40 and then 20 meter so kind of kind of segregation between 40 20 and then 10 to uh, 5 meter and yeah this is uh, how the larvae looks like swimming uh, and yeah, I found that after four days of observation, the light intensity um, at the five to ten meter made the larvae, like swimming larvae, and also the uh, the young uh, of the core of the early settled larvae, they they bleach because of the light time, five to ten meter because quite intense. And also the light intensity at 20 and 40 meter, they they quite similar, like quite healthy. So the third one, the last the last study is the survival and acclimation of mesopotic corals at shallow reef. Uh, I, I I will not show you all of the result because quite 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 a lot. So I'll just show you the survival and also the growth of the uh, the corals, including the coral juvenile and adult corals. So the recent question was to see the if the mesopotic corals survive and grow at shallow reef and how do they acclimatize, and then um, uh, uh, for the juvenile one. So actually, the from the ceratoprahistic because they are they release already the larvae. They they I will just put them in this uh, to try them settle on the plastic plates. And then for the juvenile, which is uh, two weeks old of the coral, young corals, uh, I, I transplant them at the depth of three to five, 20 meter, and then 40 meter for six months. So, and also I put them in, uh, well, I, 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 I did this in three years, three different years. The, the last year I put them in uh, exposed and in, in the shaded areas. And this is the result. So, uh, uh, you can see here how the juveniles look like. This is after uh, around six months. And then in the first month, in the first month, I mean, in the in the in the first uh, experiment in 2013, I I just put them like in three meter depth, but in the shaded condition. I mean, not exposed to the light. I I found that well in the first month they quite um, uh, many many of them died, and then but at least they they, they can survive. They can survive until uh, six months, like uh, around uh, ten percent. So I cannot see. Sorry. And then uh, at 2015, I, I put them also at three different depths, three to five, 20 and 40 meter, but all of them in exposed areas. While at the three to five meter, they all died in the first month. While at the 20 meter, surprisingly, they, they, they can also uh, survive quite similar to the one at the 40 meter depth, like 11 to 10%. And also at the 2016, the last year, I started uh, doing this experiment. Uh, they, I put them in the in the exposed and also in the shaded condition, kind of a mixing, like from 5, 20, and then 40 meter. Because this year also happened uh, the bleaching, coral bleaching phenomenon that I mentioned earlier. So the one that 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 uh, in the shaded areas actually they can survive. For example, this the one that red. Uh, the red one, the red, uh, what do you call, um, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, shaded, uh, not shaded, I mean, the five, me five meter lower one, the red one, the dot line, uh, showing they can survive until three, the third month, but they died on, uh, at the fourth month. And then uh, I found that at the end, after six months, uh, at the, the one at 40 meter at exposed, they survive at least 6%, while at the 20 meter at the shaded place, they survive uh, until 12%. So I can see, we can see here that the, the one in the shaded uh, might survive, but maybe not at the bleaching year, 
while at the 20 meter they, 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 they can survive quite similar with the one at the 40 meter so this is the how the coral juveniles look like after like this is the first month second until the sixth month well i don't have all of the pic the pictures especially for the one at five meter because they already died until the third month but you can see here how they grow you can see that the 40 meter at, especially at the upper side they 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 quite happy they 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 they, they grow quite faster than other depths and then so this is the adult coral survival and growth over depth i i uh from uh from the adult coral, I fragment the coral into small coral or nubbins, we call it. And then we put them in the, in the what they call a, a frame, plastic, plastic frame, PVC frames, and then put them in at, 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 at three different depths at quite uh, a similar depth as the juvenile one. So this is uh, the one that I did in the 2015. And then this is the one that I did in the 2016. I did uh, twice. I did it uh, two times in the uh, this experiment. So you can see here, actually in 2015, I put also in the three meter, but at that time there was a typhoon that kind of a uh, kind of hurricane that swiped up my, my um, what do you call, my, my experiment. So I just uh, discard from the analysis, but I want to show you here that 100% of the, uh, coral at 40 meter survive while at the 20 meter around almost 80 percent and also uh, in 2016 um, well this is the where when the bleaching happened uh, during summertime so I start in the from May so June July start uh, bleaching and then all of them died at the shallower depth while the one at the uh, 40 meter the 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 gray box they this kind of uh, survive and i just want to show you the the what do you call the 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 growth rate of the corals the adult corals in in, in 2015 experiment i i i put them in august september 2015 so this this is data come from uh, this one 2015 data showing the blue one is showing the growth rate uh, per day in 20 meter the blue one and then the dark blue one showing the growth rate in 40 meter so, so you can see here that the the growth rate in 20 meter the is uh, what do you call um, is greater than the, the one at the 40 meter so you can see that the the even at 20 meter they are, they are they are happy so this is how the uh, fragmented corals look like the nubbins from the initial in 20 meter and 40 meter and then I want, just want to show you that they have uh, at the end after six months they, they have different kind of um, morphology while the one at the full 20 meter at the shallower depth they, they, they show like kind of corimbus like while the one at the 40 meter they show uh, looks like uh, like kind of planar like like kind of flattened something like that and I just want to summarize, go back to the big question that can the mesoplastic corals a source of larvae for shallow wave recovery? So in case of uh, uh, study of the coral species Ceratopora in Okinawa, Japan, I've, uh, we found that, yes, there's potential genetic connectivity like from mesoplastic coral and also shallow corals. And also for the second one study, yes, they, they are sexually reproduced and also they can recruit maybe at a deeper, at a depth deeper than uh, 20 meter only while in the shallow, they might uh, not survive related to the uh, coral dispersal. And also the third one, yes, they survive, they grew and acclimatized at depth uh, deeper than 20 meter or maybe shallower, but in the, in the shaded area. So these three kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, conclusion of my study. So, so the answer yes, maybe possibly yes for these species in this location in, 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 in Okinawa. And then uh, maybe the, 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 the potential uh, mesopotic corals as a source for, of larvae maybe can be happen uh, through the multi-generational recruitment while they can 
settle in the 20 meter maybe as a space stepping stone and then they grow and then they become other and then they can uh, release larvae again and acclimatize to the shallower in a uh, uh, longer time. And actually, I just want to mention also that, uh, well, uh, some study about the related to the deep reef refugia hypothesis, but not all. I mean, I just want to show that the deep reef refugia still, I mean, remains an unsure. An, an, an and actually, it's not it's not universal at, at, at some places. For example, there's also uh, uh, bleaching in the Caribbean Mesopotic corals. You can read it here. And also in the Red Sea that the Stellophora fistillata also uh, found bleach at the step. And also uh, related to the genetic connectivity that not all of the coral uh, species are quite connected. I mean, there is one study in uh, in uh, Caribbean showing that two species only one have potential uh, connectivity, and also uh, there is one paper about the high dissimilarity of the fish communities between shallow versus mesopotic. That uh, uh, the communities from uh, shallow fish and a deeper fish quite uh, different. So I can show you here that the deep reef refugia maybe the still now the uh, species and location specific and but the, the 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 answer is still that the mesopotic reef remain unexplored so i want to show you uh, how scattered the mesopotic coral studies studies right now that you can see here well we can see many star here like the number i mean studies of mesopotic corals but it's 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 only scattered like uh, that most of them have, I mean, occurred in the Caribbean Sea while other places, especially Indonesia, my country, is quite low. And um, so this is uh, kind of uh, end of my presentation, my slides. So I want to highlighting then for the future perspective that the, still that the uh, uh, Mesopotamic coral ecosystem is still unexplored, so I think we need to explore more to pay at least to make where and what organism at at Mesopotamic coral ecosystem, and also related to the deep reef refugia hypothesis. Uh, there's still a lot of question actually to be answered, including the Mesopotamic coral. How the Mesopotamic coral fertilize? I mean, uh, I mean, uh, for the like uh, gametes, uh, eggs and sperm fertilize and yeah, how does it happen, and then what is the uh, the rate, and also the gamete compatibility? If 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 coral from shallow and also from the mesopotic are they compat compat uh, compatible or not? And then uh, related to the genetic connectivity, and also related to uh, biodiversity and community structure uh, studies, I think still need to be explored, and also to see. Uh, uh, the global and local threats to the Mesopotamic coral ecosystem, because at, at this time, I think we still don't know this uh, uh, question. That's it. I think that's all of my talks. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Um, this yeah, webinar will be uploaded to YouTube. So if you have friends who would like to see it and who missed it, let them know. And um, you might have realized on our website that we haven't announced a new webinar yet after this one. We will take a break for the December session because otherwise it would be either directly on Christmas or on New Year's. So our next webinar will take place on the last Saturday in January. And I will upload it with more details to the website as soon as it's all set. But it looks like that we will have again a guest speaker from American Samoa, um, a really experienced coral researcher who will talk about the importance of um, identifying corals to species level, which is, yeah, can be very challenging. But yeah, I will announce the details through an email uh, as soon as we have them on the website and as soon as it's set for registration. Then uh, thank you all for attending. I have
copied all the emails and names of students who will then receive an e-certificate and looking forward to seeing you again and i wish you all a really good evening or day depending on where you are goodbye